Hey guys, so BTS Jin has become the first male brand ambassador for one of Korea's major cosmetics and skincare brands, Laneige. He came out of the gates swinging, and this was the bat. It is the Laneige Creamy Skin 2-in-1 Toner. Is it any good? Well, we're going to get into it. What are some of the alternatives? Would I buy this? I've used this for a few days and I want to share my thoughts on this brand partnership and the actual product in particular because we got to make sure that this is a good product for our BTS gin. So of course, Worldwide Handsome was already handsome worldwide before Laneige, but he said that he was very happy to embark on this journey of brand ambassadorship with Laneige because, you know, he just came out of the military and things be rough over there in terms of keeping up your beauty regimen. However, he felt that this was, you know, however, he's still, you know, Worldwide handsome, but this is a good way for him to focus on the revitalization and kind of like the beauty aspect. So it's really cool. How much does this cost? It starts at $16 for the smaller 1.7 ounce, and this is the bigger one. I believe it's like about 5.7 ounces or 170 milliliters, and this is about $36 in the United States. In Korea, I looked it up, this big one is almost like like $20 in Korea. So that is the advantage of buying a lot of your K-beauty in Korea. It becomes almost like a done deal. Like you can't beat the quality, you can't beat the price, but once it goes overseas, it can get a little bit more expensive. So this thing is called Cream Skin and it is a toner. And you guys might be like, Wait a minute, how is this a toner when I'm used to this as a toner, like the Clinique, where basically it's almost like rubbing alcohol? And yes, they're both classified as toners, but I would say that they are two completely different items. Obviously, I keep this on hand. I think that this still has a use, but only for special cases. When you really want to disinfect with rubbing alcohol, but don't want to put rubbing alcohol on your face. Let's say you have a pimple eruption. You want to disinfect the area. A particular day, it's just, there's just too much stuff clogging your face and you need like just a deep clean and just kind of almost like you're stripping off all the paint like paint thinner on your face you don't want to do that every day you don't want to do it more than a, a, twice a day this is just the heavy hitter what i would say every day for the toners you have to differentiate between toners that's going to continually continue the cleansing process and strip and exfoliate versus a toner that you put on that adds to your skin. So here, these two toners, alcohol-based, witch hazel-based, this is what I use every day. And I think that, and this is what you use on a cotton pad. And these two are priced accordingly where the cotton, eh, if you beautify the cotton pad, no problem. You beautifying a cotton pad at this price, mm -mm, that is just way too rich for my blood. So you just put this in your hands and you apply it like a nice water. So the reason why it's important to differentiate is that one is going to strip and you want to strip as gently as possible. That's why I recommend the Thayer's Witch Hazel and even in the Rose. And it will allow you to unless your skin is really kind of like scaly or something that let just produces a lot of skin that needs to exfoliate if you do that you don't have to use any harsh exfoliation you want to stay away from it because by the time after you cleanse you do this and then yes this is becoming a little bit of like a skincare lesson a lot of you have asked i've done other videos before but hey here's an updated version then you want to start in my opinion adding 
to your skin. The way that Western, even like European, definitely American skincare tends to lean towards is continuously stripping, exfoliating, you know, like the glycolic acids, the AHAs, the even the vitamin Cs. While you're putting on things that are supposed to nourish you, you're still peeling stuff away. That's why you get a lot of people with like skin that looks patchy and they're saying the skin barrier, the skin barrier. Well, because you've gone done doing everything to ruin your skin barrier at every single step and didn't even know it. And so this is supposed to help the skin barrier. So what I'm saying is that you should start being in an additory mood. And when people ask, what is the most important part of the skincare regimen or the product? Nobody ever believes me. Nobody ever wants to listen because they don't want to hear the answer. They think that you should spend the most amount of money on the, the wrinkle cream, where I think that this is the where area where you can save the most amount of money. You don't need a fancy wrinkle cream. This one's pretty good if you got to be, you know, got to go for the American made or is this French? I don't know. Mm, this one's pretty good. Do you want to get the one with the Manuka honey, not with the bitter orange that they're trying to sneak in to, I think, increase their profit margins? Anyhow, it's the toner. Why? Because after you've cleansed, after you've used something to exfoliate, your skin is in the most vulnerable, open, raw position, and you want to have the best thing make the next contact. It's sort of like people who believe in having good underwear because that's the closest it's getting to your skin versus people really like underwear, like nobody sees that. Who cares what kind of underwear you wear? This is not exactly like underwear, but I think this is more important because this is more the health of your skin. And this is why I think it's important to take very good care of which toner you're going to choose and spend the most money on. This is the most expensive. Okay, so Laneige is a child of the overall corporate corporation of Amori Pacific, which has its own top of the line brand under its corporate company name, Amore Pacific. This is 200 milliliters, so 30 milliliters more than this. However, this is, I think in America, like $100. I got it in duty free and got some coupons and stuff like that to lower the price. However, this is how serious I take it. This whole line, it's too expensive to use everything in the whole line, like, you know, the, the serums and the wrinkle creams and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to do the most amount of spending, I believe it's a toner. It's the least sexy answer. Nobody wants to believe it. And even nobody even like Amore Pacific, the actual flagship brand is not even that. It, there, there's no flowers and chocolates with this. It's basically give me the best, no fuss. Just make it professional and deliver results. That's the kind of customer it appeals to. Amore Pacific's other brands has a lot more flowers and chocolates, especially that Hera brand. I don't know. That's more of like your mistresses. Like, you know, if the wife is like wanting to compete with the mistress or suspecting a mistress, or if you the mistress herself, like Hera has the mistress vibes. Sarwasu is what... It's a, in the minds of the consumer, Sarwasu might be the actual flagship, flagship brand because that is what most people, I think, in Korea would think of as the top brand under the Amore Pacific brand. It's a little bit questionable. Which one? Is it this Amore Pacific or is it Sarwasu? Sarwasu is much more based in the ginseng. This is much more based in the green tea, but they have many different... Uh, natural and technological ingredients. Laneige, how does Laneige, Laneige is almost like the, the sister of this, a little bit more technical, a little bit more straightforward. However, with Laneige, there's no like brand category killer. There's no 
product where you're just like, mm, that's Laneige. Maybe recently the lip mask because of BTS, but Laneige is sort of like, sort of like the Toyota Corolla. Like it's there, you always want it to be there, but customers are always like, well, I want something a little bit, you know, a little bit more fun and more dynamic than Toyota Corolla, but they would be upset if the Toyota Corolla disappeared. So Laneige is very reliable standby at a decent price point and I do like how they're now targeting probably the overseas market and you can tell with the products the overseas customers in my estimation are leading product development for Laneige whereas like Amore Pacific or definitely Solwasu it's still the Korean Ajuma who is first and foremost as the customer they're listening to first and then everybody wants to follow the Korean Ajima. Whereas Laneige seems like they're, it's kind of like the ignored, you know, uh, child. So they're, I think it's smart because they have space in their whole portfolio of skincare products for this to be the brand that is led by the overseas consumer. Because this whole thing about the skin barrier, you'll see the Yes, there are some products now that cater to that concern and market based on that in Korea, but it's less of a concern. It's a huge concern among American customers in particular because I think the the chemicals are so harsh in American skincare. That's why there's so many skincare products that can even just sell based on it's free of phthalates, free of chemicals like just free free free. i'm just like then let can i can you can i sell you a bottle of air it's free of everything you know in korea the standards are a little bit higher so you don't have to lead with oh it's free of stuff that'll be bad for you although you know there might be some there however it's less of a concern but the way that this one has been marketed it is free of a lot of bad things if you look at the sephora uh, description of it, it says that it is free of parabens, formaldehydes, formaldehyde releasing agents, phthalates, mineral oil, retinal palmade, oxybenzone, coal tar, hydroquinone sulfates, SLS, and uh, like tons of stuff. And uh, not and it contains less than one percent of synthetic fragrance. So if you look at it, it is very. There's no smell, and it's very watery, Ooh, like this. And so what I like to do is go like this and then pat my face after I use this. So while your skin is still damp, you want to lock in the hydration of the water. This also, why take these toner so seriously okay so this one is like a boutique uh cult brand and it focus it's called one thing and it focuses on one thing so this is like when you really want to kind of a, instead of a multivitamin this one's niacinamide so you really want to put some niacinamide in your face they have other brands this one is a uh, male oriented brand m d o c and this one is more of like anti sebum so same thing you just put it on your face but this is when you feel like you might be a little bit too greasy or if you are you know if I want to go out and I'll play outdoor sports this might be my foundation for the skincare or but then this is this is the primo okay this is the primo it just seems like it's simple I don't even know what it does but it just makes me look better when I use it now this one the one that Jin is promoting is supposed to be a two-in-one and it's supposed to be so technologically advanced that they blended a whole bottle of skincare cream in here so that you can sort of skip the cream part they didn't say anything about the serum but you know that obviously this is for a customer who does not do the whole 10-step skincare system it's also for a customer who says like oh do i really need that or can't we combine two in one if you believe in two in one shampoo you're the wrong customer there is usually no place where like you know you combine two in one and you're gonna get any good results the only two in one i've ever felt that surpasses each one is brunch okay otherwise you want to make sure that each person each skincare step is doing the best at its job don't try to do two three jobs at once but i do like how 
they are focusing on the toner. I never thought they would because I don't know if you can convince people who don't know, you know, because if you know, you know, but people who don't know that they need to have a good toner. It's like a good foundation. You know, be thinking about like, oh, I want a Calcutta marble or whatever it's called, like as a house interior, but you got to take care of the foundation first. And so this is a pretty good foundation and it has a more of a two in one. It's for almost any skin type, normal, dry combination and oily. It's a comforting milky cream toner hybrid in a refillable bottle so yes you can refill it it's going to be eco-conscious i think maybe they've been under attack because if you look at their packaging or their components for laneige it looks really plastic heavy almost as if they hired somebody from the apple airpods department and you know made like amazing things but okay so this is refillable so it's being more eco-conscious and they call it a lightweight cream, but yeah, it's basically a toner with extra ceramides and peptides to nourish hydration, visibly firm, and skin soothe. So if you have skin that's a little bit on the reddish side or rosacea side, this would be really good. If you, uh, the reason why I think that this is kind of like an all hitter is like if you have oilier skin, it'll be good. If you have drier skin, it'll be good. It's actually doing both of those skin ranges at once, which you, in the past, I don't think you could have accomplished. You either had to choose, this is going to absorb your sebum or you're going to, you know, moisturize, moisturize and glow. But I think it can do both now, which is pretty cool. And yes, it is going to focus on the skin barrier but beyond that it, you don't want to just you know say it's going to fix a problem how is it going to enhance so this is good to you know start the process of firming your skin it's for aging skin as well but i don't think you you know it doesn't feel like an old lady's like heavy wrinkle cream even though it's for aging skin, I think young people can also use this. So they really are focusing on like anybody and everybody can use this. And I think they can. I think it's pretty good. And if you look at the ingredients, I was kind of surprised. I've never heard of meadow foam seed oil, but apparently it's compared to coconut oil and jojoba oil, but less greasy, not greasy at all so it moisturizes your skin and then it also has the hyaluronic acid good it has the ceramides and amino acids good and it has the camellia extracts two versions of them and what they do is that it helps protect the skin from free radicals it regulates your sebum production so they really did a great job in making this the all-in-one doesn't offend everybody, but does deliver results. It's a good product. And I think that's great for Jin to promote, especially as a male brand ambassador, the first one, because it's no nonsense. And actually, if even a guy, they're just like, I don't want to put on, okay, if you don't put on sunscreen, at least on your face, then be willing to accept the results. But, you know, for people who are just like, I don't want to put on any kind of uh, cream that's heavy, then, hey, if you're going to have somebody, you know, not, let's say like somebody who doesn't want to drink water. Okay, fine. Put ice cubes in their drink and then they'll get some water. This is a similar thing. You're going to just, if you can convince somebody who doesn't like to do skincare at all, just put on this after they wash their face, they will have at least some level of protection and they will look better. And then, you know, as they look better, they'll probably want to uh, get a more complex skincare routine that makes them look even better. So Amore Pacific has been around for such a long time the company officially in Korea, in South Korea, was established in 1945, basically like at the end of uh, the 
World War II, but apparently the uh, founder in South Korea, the mom, started selling some camellia oil, which is features heavily in this. Camel uh, as in North Korea before Korea was divided in Kaesong in the 1930s. So this has had huge history. Amore Pacific is one of the world's 10 largest cosmetics companies. It's the second largest cosmetics company in South Korea. And it has many brands that you might know. Sarwasu, like we mentioned, Laneige, this is Laneige, Mamond, Etude House, Amori Pacific, Innisfree, which I'm a fan of as well. And then Laneige itself started in 1994, and you might know it from E. Nayong, which I think was like the heyday of the brand. I think and during that era, it really was sort of like, you know, when Toyota Corollas would be like the best or like the market killer. It still is actually, I think. But the name itself is uh, French for the snow. So I don't know if that's going to spark any colorism debates, but I think maybe... The Korean part throws it off a bit and people aren't studying French no more, but you know, essentially it's supposed to be like, you know, clean and pure skin, which I think makes sense in the sense, you know, beyond the colorism part, it is going to be more of a straightforward brand. You're not going to get all the flowers and, you know, chocolates and like, the ooh, you know, kind of marketing around a lot of these uh, cosmetics companies. So I think this is actually quite a very transparent. It, you get what you, you know, you get what you see. I think that's great for Jin, especially for a guy, uh, the first guy brand ambassador, the face of Laneige. And especially because Laneige, you know, doesn't, it has a long history and it's part of a big company that has an even longer history. So you have the know-how, the team, the marketing, like you can trust the product, but it's a question of what product are they coming up with? So in some sense, they have no baggage because they don't hold on to a lot of uh, products at all. Like, if it doesn't sell. So you'll notice a lot of Korean brands, like they don't have that that one product that they've had for like 30 years, unless it is a you know continuous seller. They will ditch a product and come up with a new one like nobody's business. And Laneige, I think, almost has like a blank slate. You're seeing these uh, recent new products that are establishing themselves actually into perhaps a steady seller that will be kept on the books for a while. But in some ways, it's an open book so that Laneige can be very flexible. And I think that will work in Jin's favor because it'll be, they won't have to have the legacy baggage of products that he needs to fit into. Laneige seems to be more of like they can create the future and have their brand ambassador fit into that as well or whatever the customer wants, the customer really needs I hope the customer wants it as well, but the customer in what I've seen in America definitely needs to repair their skin barrier, and it's not going to come from the wrinkle cream step because that's too late. You need to get it in the toner step, and I'm glad that now BTS Gin Worldwide Handsome is going to emphasize and echo and amplify the message I've been saying for years. You got to get the toner part right for a good foundation for your skincare routine. All right, guys, what do you think? Would you buy this? What do you think of the brand ambassadorship? And what are you using as your toner step, if at all, in your skincare routine. Put your comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.